Hello, I'm Casey Dinges, Senior Managing Director for the American Society of Civil Engineers. Thanks for joining us today for a discussion on how design thinking can lead you to creative problem solving. My guest today is Brent Darnell, owner and president of Brent Darnell International and an expert on cultivating emotional intelligence and design thinking in civil engineers. Welcome, Brent. Thanks. Good to be here. What is design thinking and how can it be applied to civil engineering? Well, I mean, civil engineers design stuff all the time, right? So we've used this Stanford D School. Do you know the D School? Yeah. It's an interdisciplinary design school. Okay. So you have like history majors with with that, that would be me. With engineers, with architects, with I mean, it's, it's really truly interdisciplinary. So they get a lot of different viewpoints and ideas, and they've created this this design process, which works really well. We use it as a framework because it's a great framework and engineers like frameworks mm -hmm. and process. Mm -hmm. But we found the biggest stumbling block to innovative design is right between your ears. It's, a, it's that, you know, and I'll give you the basics. The, yeah. the first step is empathize, which a lot of engineers say, what? Like, what is that? Empathize. But that's the first step in this design process is gather some information and see what the end users are going to be needing and see what's been tried before and really dig into asking a lot of good questions. And then the second one is um, clearly state the problem, clearly define it, which we don't do very well a lot of times. The third one is ideation. That's when you start based on the empathy and knowing what people need and knowing what the design needs, then you know, clearly defining what am I trying to solve here or, or design here, what problem am I solving by this design, then it's ideation. Then you prototype and then you test. So it's those five steps. Now guess where every engineer, every group I've ever worked with, guess which step they start with? Um, ideation. Ideation, yeah. They just start throwing out answers. Right. They don't ask questions, they don't try to understand. I've been in a few meetings like that. <laughs> right, and that's the default, right? Uh, I've got knowledge, I've got experience, I'm gonna give you the answer, and I mean, that's what we're trained, paid to do as engineers is find the answer, right? With those five steps in mind, how does problem solving suffer when engineers work within self-imposed constraints? Well, this, that's the problem. And, and mostly that's, again, between the ears or it's a cultural thing. So when you say, what if we did it this way? And, and you get answers like, well, we tried that in 2005 and it didn't work. So, you know, we can't do that. Well, maybe some things have changed since 2005, right? So, and we have these patterns of thinking and we have the one solution. We're trained to find that one solution, that one answer that's a right answer, right? And I, I, you want an example of this? Sure. Let's, let's play this game. So say the names of the days of the week out loud, go. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now, say the names of the days of the week in alphabetical order, go. Oh. Um. <laughs> Let's see, this is gonna take a little time. Oh, okay. Let's see, I got S, couple of S, there are lots of, a couple of T words, a couple of S words, I got a W word. Uh, so we're kind of at the back, I know we're in the back part, part of the alphabet here. All right, so see so your brain is really struggling to come up yeah. with an answer. Right. right, I haven't been asked that question before. All right, so, so here's what's happening. Your brain is really lazy. We, uh, neuros, neuroscience Darn. tells us brain is extremely lazy. When it, when it needs to burn glucose to, to figure things like that out, most of the time it just says, I don't wanna do that. Like I give up, it's not that important to me. So change neur neurologically is almost the same as pain because you have to burn a lot of glucose and create new neural pathways to get that new pattern of thinking. And so we tend to shy away from things that are different, things that are difficult, things that are new because it's, a, it's, it's, it's the way your brain works, right? But once you get it, you can say, Friday, Monday, Saturday, Sunday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If I eat enough for breakfast, that is. <laughs> um, so you've touched upon this, but why is it important for civil engineers to think differently when solving problems? I mean, look at what we have. We have an inter infrastructure that's crumbling, right? We need the, 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 the best, the, the most innovative approaches to be able to fix all that needs fixing, right? And, and you know, it's, it's not only that, it's, it's also being able to collaborate because the industry seems to be moving toward much more collaboration and collaborative project delivery. So it's a different set of skills that we need. So we need to be, be really innovative and figure, like start with a clean slate and say, 
what we're, what we're doing, it works and we can design stuff that way, but is there a new way? Is there a totally, like no preconceptions, no, well, I don't think that'll work, but, but let's figure out how we can make that work. And if we don't do that, I think we're in big trouble. If we try to do traditional design, you know, and, and construct for, for all these infrastructure issues, I think we'll, we'll never, we will never fix everything. Well, we have so many uh, challenges with kind of un unknown paths ahead. We talk about, you know, automobile technology, driverless technology, right. connected cars. Uh, how exactly will that play out? Well, I think technology is a big piece of this. To, and you're looking at a lot of uh, prefabrication and modularization and, and lots of technology in terms of just how to design with, with um, you know, computer-aided stuff and BIM and those kind of things. Those are important, but here's the thing I've found. Technology is awesome, and those new ways of working are awesome, but again, it's about changing the heart it's, you know, and changing the between the years. People have to embrace that change. So what are some of the ways civil engineers can incorporate design thinking and innovation in future projects? Well, I think we have to uh, not say we've always done it that way. I think we have to, again, I think it's more of a cultural shift. It's about changing that culture to one of, not one of, um, boy, this works and, and traditional design works, but one of how can we be better? How can we really turn this on its head and do something disruptive in terms of bridge design or in terms of civil design, structural design? How can we make it totally different? You know, I mean, we, we lament the fact that we have, we don't have skilled labor. Why don't we design buildings where we don't need any skilled labor? I mean, you know, we have to start thinking in those really disruptive terms because if we don't, we're number one going to be behind, and, and number two, I think there's other uh, com companies, organizations, countries that are really embracing these kinds of changes, and they're going to come over here and just start doing that, you know, doing that thing. Brent, thank you for joining me today for this informative discussion on the importance of design thinking in civil engineering. Thank you. It's my pleasure. For more information on ASCE's interchange program, visit ASCE.org slash interchange. Thanks for tuning in today. And we'll see you next time on the ASCE Interchange.